Caltech string theorist, lawyer and bar nut. He's going to talk about flattening the legal tower of Babel. All right, hi everybody. Uh, you know, it's a mantra these days that the world is flat. But look at that. The Tower of Babel, it is decidedly not flat with its 7,000 languages. And so how can we be innovative when we can't even understand each other's law? So what do we do? Do we try to flatten it? Do we try to do some Star Trek Federation global law? Well, that's Mississippi. I like to, I like to call this the uh, first click free rule. And so I don't know that we all want to have the same law. Uh, so we're going to have to find ways to translate it. Now, if along the way as we're translating it, we can also make the law machine readable, and, and uh, how amazing would that be? Now, there's something on the order of 134 co-official languages, depending how you count. That's a lot of different pairs to translate back and forth, let alone the 7,000. So what do we do? It'd be nice if there was some lingua franca, some general language we all agreed. We'll use that for law, and that'll happen, of course, when pigs fly. So, so how do it? So, what, um, so what, what can we do? We need something like a verbal Java, some way that you can have a construct that you can, without, so, so to speak, recompiling, drop it into any language and translate it. We got to regress to the beginning. Pictures, we all understand pictures. And so it, language independent, grammar independent, shoot tasty deer, yum, right? We all, we all know what that means. And so, um, and so the problem, though, is if you take out the grammar, to really have a language, you got to put it back in. There's this really smart guy in India, Ajit Narayawan, I think, uh, who found a way to computerize going from pictures to, to actual language with all its grammar and proper sentence structure. And so that's what we got to do. So here's a sentence in pictures. It's easy to make the pictures. I didn't make the pictures, but it's easy to do. Um, and, but how do you get the order right? How do you get the tenses right? How do you get the, the overall structure right? Well, that's what Ajit uh, did, basically. And so what you have here, someone in the middle is, is telling something. Who's telling? I'm telling. Who am I telling? I'm telling the carpenter. Actually, see the little time thing? I told the carpenter. I told the carpenter, what? Well, I can't. I won't be able to pay him. Anyway, with the little arrows, suddenly the picture becomes the equivalent of a sentence. Now, this is working well with autistic children. They're using it. Is it going to work for law? So the, um, uh, the, because uh, well, a lot of intangibles, I don't mean that as a put down <laughs> lawyers, there are, a lot of in, there are a lot of intangibles in law. You know, corporation equals person, whatever, that, all those things. But law also has a lot of structure, so I think it can work. You know, here you might want to say, you know, that clown breached a contract with me. Well, and you see the time going backwards, so it's, it's a breach of contract. What if I wanted to turn that into anticipatory repudiation? It's not hard to do. The arrow just switches. So now it's, now it, now it's easier for computers to go from the pictures to the language than vice versa. How do we help them? Do we need to do some kind of fancy taxonomy? I don't think so, because codes get us really very close to what we need, so we need to codify. <laughs> I knew you'd love it. Um, and and the, th the, the problem is section 372.4b, what does that mean? It means nothing, because every state is different. Every jurisdiction is different. If the computer's going to get information out of all this, what we need to do is have a universal codification. <laughs> and and so, so then if we put it together for all 50 states and then various countries, most of them are civil law, then you can have something where the computer can figure out what's going on, build this structure, which then can be uh, uh, translated. Now, with cases, I think it's going to be a lot harder. You don't have the easy codification. But once the computer knows what those little points of law are, hopefully, uh, then it can uh, get the holdings at the very least. So what is this going to do for us? Well, at the simplest, this is a meaning-based language. We're extracting basic meaning. So for the members of the public, I give you my pineapple. It's pretty clear. You don't get the legalese. It's going to be wonderful for DIY and all that good stuff. You might lose some nuances, but, but that's, that's where we are. Now, another thing, if you had machine-readable law, 
is that you could really do quantitative comparative studies and figure out how different countries are different in their laws. And if you do that, you can start asking the question, does law matter? What is the impact? What's the right thing to do for policy? Uh, so show me all countries where this kind of law changed in this way and when, correlate it with economic data, crime data, and hopefully it would help government figure out what the, the best laws would be. Um, now, there's also ways in which, and of course this will lead to a lot of innovation and competition, but not just in technology. If we all can really read and understand the law of the world, then what does that mean? Into what, what, what does a global lawyer mean? How, how, what happens to licensing rules and reciprocity rules? So, so I think all that has to change. Um, you know, another example, if, if the computer can really figure out nuanced differences in state law, you know, we, and, and today they're generating contracts. Can you generate an even better contract with those nuances that the computer could read? So there's so many different things we could talk about. Um, but I think what I, what the, the best thing to do is say, um, let's talk about them a little later. So, so I want to invite all of you to what we're calling the Lex Drink after party uh, at Mercat, uh, which is at, uh, it's going to be at 9.30. And when you come out of the Hilton, uh, you make a left. It's at the Blackstone, I think, right across the street, Mercat, 9.30. Thank you. Thank you.